Today I'm joined by record-breaking Group 1 winning jockey, TV presenter and now brand ambassador for Bet Goodwin, Hayley Turner. Thanks very much, Hayley, for uh, taking some time out to speak to us. Um, what's more nerve-wracking, riding at Royal Ascot or broadcasting about it on ITV? Broadcasting about it, definitely. I don't, I, like, I don't present, I'm just like a pundit and um, and that's that even that's out my comfort zone a little bit. I find it a lot harder work because broadcasting doesn't come natural to me. So I have to do loads of homework and it's just like, it tires me out actually. I get more tired presenting than I do broadcasting than I do riding horses, basically. Is that why you came out of retirement then? Yeah, I realised <laughs> that actually my job wasn't that bad. Uh, now you've done the fav the bookmakers' favours twice at Royal Ascot, winning on thirty three to one shots in the Sandringham handicap. Um, are you are you are you aware of odds on offer on your mounts before you before you ride them? No, like in the race in the weighing room, I'll look on the racing post app, and you'll see if they're being backed or not, but. Sometimes, like, they get it completely wrong. So I rode one at Brighton the other day and went off, like, five to two favourite. And I just I just couldn't get my head around it because I thought, this, I'm really sure this horse isn't going to win this race. And I, I was right. I think I beat a couple. But, yeah, it, it, it's completely irrelevant to us what price the horses are. OK, with that in mind, does it take the pressure off a bit when you're riding 33 to one shots and you know they're sort of not really expected? Yeah, I think so. A, a little bit. Um, I mean, it's good to have a bit of pressure at the same time. You're always um, on a hide into nothing if you're on a short price favourite, because unless you win, you know, you you get blamed quite a lot by angry punters on <laughs> social media in particular. Now, um, we recently lost the late great Lester Piggott, and one of his famous sayings was that uh, a good jockey doesn't need instructions and a bad one wouldn't be able to carry them out anyway. What do you think about that? Completely agree. Completely agree. And actually, I, I find I ride better with the less orders that I get because it's like we do, we do do our homework. Like we will have watched free plays or, you know, if they haven't ran before, we'll have a good idea of what everyone else is doing and, um it's you can have plan a going out into the race but you might miss the kick or they might go too quick or your horse might not be handling the track or or it might not handle the ground or it just you know it's just a million different reasons why it won't go to plan a so yeah i completely agree with that okay no, and this is sort of thinking about a big handicap or someone like royal Ascot. i mean would it be even possible to have a plan just to try and win is that it I think it's important to know the horses around you. Um, if you're following a 50 to one shot and a sort of nine to two, you'd rather try and edge in behind the one that's going to take you further into the race. So it's important to be aware of what's around you, but sometimes the outsider will take you further than the fancied one. So you have to, you have to be on the ball and look to see how they're traveling. Um, and and where the pace is in the race, especially in the in the big handicaps, um, if you've got a low draw and the pace is all high, and um, I think to have a basic understanding of what's going on around you, but it's very difficult in a thirty runner handicap to to make a solid plan. Okay, and back during the, the dark days of lockdown, I was very lucky and was able to go racing when there was no crowd there. And one of the things I noticed, I'd never noticed before, was the amount of noise the jockeys make, shouting at each other and talking, like jump racing, talking to each other the first circuit and shouting at each other near the finish. I mean, is that, you know, is that something that happens all the time? Quite often, yeah. There's, um, <clears throat> you've got a few, a few jockeys a bit more whingier than the others. Um, and then it's funny because you actually learn who to ignore and who not to, you know, who to ignore and who not to. If you get a jockey sh shouting you that doesn't usually, you, you know, it's just, you kind of, you get a gist of who's given, who's, you know, uttering complete nonsense and who you need to listen to if they're shouting for a bit of room. Um, 
or if someone's in trouble or just yeah if you, you're hanging out the back and you've got you know going suppose the jump jockeys have a lot more time to chat than we do but um yeah just not, you know not not every race but it happens yeah okay now we've heard the old saying uh horses for courses can we assume it's the same for jockeys no i don't think so i suppose um no i i think it's all about the horse you're on um especially with jockeys in in the uk we're all quite used to riding at different tracks and different styles it's sort of if you're in america they have round flat tracks and they're all the same whereas in england you've got you know like the lights of epsom where you're up down you cross sides and you know they take a lot of riding but when you've done so many different ones each track's adaptable i think you could jockeys certainly have favorite tracks um but probably not tracks that they're better at than others i suppose i don't know like richard king's coat knows haydock well um but because of that he gets all the good rides there so um so then it kind of snowballs but i wouldn't say it's you know an essential thing to look at when when people are betting okay now one of the things you hear pundits say is that a horse is unlucky okay is is there such a thing as an unlucky horse yeah yeah a lot of the time um so say you're on a hold up horse and you have to sit out the back because that's its style needs to switch off and they go slow and then it switches out and runs on but you know because it's turned into a sprint it doesn't suit them so one would be unlucky there or if a horse got boxed in on the rail and had nowhere to go and when the gap came it came too late and the race was already over um so yeah you can have horses that are unlucky Okay, uh, you're based in Newmarket. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you ride sort of unraced sort of two year olds and things at home before they see a race course? Yeah, yeah, quite a lot. Do a lot of riding out in Newmarket. Okay, how long does it take take you personally to sort of re suss out if one is a good one or not? Um, it's they they tend to progress sort of. You know, I rode a two year old out this morning and she gave me a lovely feel but she certainly isn't ready she certainly isn't ready to win a big race like that but it'll be interesting when i ride her again next week to see how she's progressed from that first bit of work she did today and how well she's taken it and um you know it's it's just more about the progression you see of the horse rather than just sitting on it once and and knowing uh, would you expect to get the ride when the horse first goes on to a course? I'm, ho I'm hoping so, but it's definitely not a, it's not guaranteed. Okay, so is it is it added pressure riding sort of really immature, sort of young horses, two-year-olds, their first time out, that sort of thing? No, not at all. It's quite fun, actually. It's, in, it's interesting because no matter how well they go at home sometimes, they get to the track and it's so different for that, for them what they're used to from when they arrive in the horse parts and they're in the stable yard and there's all these different horses walking around um, and then they're in the parade ring and some of them just take it really well but some of them just fall to pieces and um, that's why a lot of horses tend to improve massively from the first run to their second run. Okay, so as a jockey would you, do you prefer when you get your book of rides uh, inexperienced horses or do you like the older handicappers? Would you look, would you look or to most um i think the younger horses is, is they're always it's always quite nice to find a good one because you don't know how far they're going to take you so they could be progress into you know a, a group one saturday horse um handicappers are always fun but handicapping's you know a handicap um and they're easier to win than than the big group races so as much as I like riding in the big handicaps, I, I think it's more exciting to get on a young horse and it show you potential. Okay. Now, do horses remember their jockeys? I don't think so. 
I mean, sometimes in the yards, the same person will ride out the same horse every day and the horse will be familiar with the, the rider then. But no, I think when a, a jockey walks over to a horse in the paddock and, you know, they're not be like, oh, Hayley, how are you? <laughs> you know, good weekend? No. <laughs> So you don't think if you, if you gave a, a horse a particularly hard ride to win by a nose that next time it saw you, it'd think, uh-oh, there's Hayley. Yeah, start running backwards. <laughs> uh, no, they they definitely, like, having a hard race, a lot of horses take it, like, badly. Um, and I think whatever jockey gets on next time, they'll probably be, some, some horses are more anxious and, and stressed about it. Some horses actually go quite well for it, so... Yeah, how, how easy is it to sour a horse? Very easy. Very, very, very easy. And I think this, that's why so many trainers do such a good job, especially with these handicappers that keep going year after year and, and reproducing the form because they're, they're very sensitive. I mean, if I was a racehorse, I'd be difficult to, to keep sweet. You know, so, yeah, it could go wrong quite easily. it take a lot longer to undo the damage it's done yeah yeah exactly okay, so i suppose you've answered the next question really do you think that some horses run better for certain jockeys assuming the jockeys are of the same ability uh no i think that a rider can definitely make a difference a good rider can make a difference from a bad rider definitely okay we've got the big um the, the big flat meetings coming up now uh if you do have a certain sort of fitness regime or maybe even routine on the run up to a big race or a big meeting? Um, at, at the moment, um, we're so busy. Like I've ridden out two horses this morning and we're racing every day, like two or three rides a day. So our general fitness this time of year is quite good. And, and just for me, it's all about sort of keeping fresh you know like it's we do a lot of driving and it's quite easy to get run down um and so my routine would be like i've ridden out and i've got an ice bath in the garage um i quite like getting in that i think it's about five degrees at the moment so i'll get in that for i did i managed like two minutes in it yesterday and that just gives me a, a real like kick it's amazing um but sort of pre-season, I'll train hard and get fit. Um, but at the moment, it's, it's more about stretching, resting and, um, you know, eating well, getting as much sleep as you can. And, and big days and, like, aren't any different. You just treat them as you would any other day. Maybe just leave a little bit earlier because the roads are always busy getting into Epsom. I'm glad you mentioned the ice bath because I was speaking to somebody at Newton Abbott yesterday, Luke Harvey, actually, and he said that there was a picture of you somewhere yeah. with this. Is it a new acquisition, the ice bath? But you couldn't find it. I was looking for the picture yeah, for so evidence, but. It's called, uh, it was on my Instagram. It's called uh, Brass Monkey. And um, it's actually my brother in law's business. And they're becoming really fashionable. So he's, he's really into like Wim Hof. And he was after having some coaching by him he was looking for an ice bath and he couldn't find one that would um be uh, appropriate so he decided to make them himself this is my garage and this is my brass monkey ice bath and uh just take the lid off it and that's it there ah there's not actually so, ice in it, it's just cold. It's just very cold. Um, well, it's it's at the moment it is uh six degrees, which is cold enough. Um you you, you get you it goes up to minus 0.9. Um and then that's ice, so you just you basically crack the ice at the top and it's just a shallow layer, so it's like a and, and that's tough and you have to do the, um, you have to actually do it every day. And it's amazing, it just press you, gets everything pumping around. And yeah, I, I, I mean, they're becoming really popular. Okay, I lost you a bit there, but I'm glad I didn't expect to get to actually see your ice bath, bath there. Yeah. Um, 
We've got just a couple of questions left. Um, you won two Royal Ascot races since coming out of retirement. It, is your full-time mm -hmm. TV career just on hold while you're enjoying race riding, or do you have another challenge on the horizon? Oh, um, I definitely wouldn't say that my TV career will be full-time. Um, a, because I just don't think I'm quite... You know, like I'll never be a presenter. I don't, I'm just not comfortable doing it. Um, quite enjoy being a pundit, especially on ITV, because we get to do the big meetings and the, where, we, where we stand to do the presenting is always such a good atmosphere. Um, and they're, they're a really good, fun team. Uh, I think I'm doing a couple of days at Ascot, actually. Um, but it, it works quite well because I'm riding there and doing the TV, um, so I get to bring in a, a good insight to everybody. Um, full time, probably not, but always happy to do that gig. Um, what else have I got on the horizon? Not really sure. I just quite enjoy riding at the moment, so I'm, I'm not really thinking about it. So the, the immediate goals are just to keep riding and enjoying riding? Yeah, I mean, the, some of the jockeys go on for years now, don't they? At least I'll be experienced. <laughs> <laughs> excellent well on that note Hayley uh, Hayley Turner thank you very much yeah cool thank you cheers thank you